Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to the DMAIC roadmap where we'll start with the five phases of DMAIC. Then we'll drill down within each phase to a second layer of detail that guides you through the general questions that should be addressed within each respective phase of DMAIC. At the beginning of each phase of DMAIC, there will be another video lesson that digs even deeper to a third layer of DMAIC that will be like a roadmap that helps navigate you through the different tools and resources necessary when working a Six Sigma project. There's only one prerequisite lesson, and that's the one that's on the problem resolution using DMAIC. So let's begin by reviewing again from that lesson the five basic steps for resolving a problem. We first introduced those five steps for resolving a problem in the example of my daughter Hannah who had a sickness and the doctor followed the five basic steps we might normally follow when we try to resolve a problem. So what we want to do is take that a little bit step further in this to make roadmap. So we're going to take those five basic steps and show you how we can apply those same five steps to the Six Sigma methodology of DMAIC. So we started off before showing how it was applied each of those steps were applied to the DMAIC methodology. But what we want to do is take it even a step further than what we did last time. We want to talk about the questions that you might ask at each of those phases. So in the very beginning when we're trying to understand a problem, again we said that was part of the define phase for DMAIC, what we're really trying to ask is do you understand the severity and scope of the problem? That's really what we're trying to say when we want to understand the problem. We want to understand how severe the problem is, how severe that pain is we're being felt within the business that we're trying to solve and also the scope of where that problem is being felt. Once we can answer that then we can move on to the next phase which is the measure phase again where we're trying to gather reliable information and the question we want to ask at that level is do you know the potential root causes and have enough reliable data to test those root causes? So it's there again in the example with my daughter Hannah where the doctor has suspicion that it was strep throat and the doctor had to do some tests to see if the strep throat was really the root cause for the symptoms that she was feeling. On the same way again in the measure phase we want to ask this question about knowing whether we identified the potential root causes and have we gathered the data and have we gathered the data in a reliable and unbiased way so that way we can have confidence we can trust that data. That's what we're trying to answer in the measure phase. And then as we move on in the analyze phase, what we're trying to answer at the top level is can you statistically validate what are those root causes? This is where we're again applying the, the statistical test to the data that we've collected in order for us to see whether we can really understand what is the root cause and prove what is the root cause that we suspect it was. Again, that's in the analyze phase and that's the top level question we're trying to answer. Next, once we can answer that question, we want to move on to the improve phase where we're trying to fix the root cause. Well, at that phase, the, phase, the big question we're trying to ask ourselves is, do you know what improvements will fix the root causes and by how much? That is, how much those root causes will be fixed by these improvements that we identified. So again, that's what we're trying to ask at the top level for the improve phase. Once we can answer that and we know we've got the improvements identified and we know exactly how much those improvements will fix the root causes and we've got it implemented, then the last phase, the control phase, where we're trying to sustain the improvement, the top level question we're trying to ask ourselves there is, did the improvement successfully and permanently resolve the original problem? If we cannot answer yes to that particular question, chances are we have not finished the project. So this is the final question at a top level that we have to to ask ourselves, did the improvement successfully and permanently resolve whatever those symptoms were, whatever the original root cause was causing those symptoms? Can we really successfully say that we have eliminated and eradicated those root causes completely? That's what we're trying to answer. And once we can say yes to that question, then we can consider the project completely finished. Okay, now let's take those DMAIC questions and use that as a starting point to dig into the second layer within each of the phases of DMAIC. So what we'll talk through now is that second layer, again where we're taking those top level questions, the questions that we would ask at each phase within DMAIC at a high level, and we're going to go down to a second level now where we get a little bit deeper and a little bit more detailed. So what we're going to show is that roadmap and we're going to have just a few questions within each of those phases rather than just one question for each phase. So these questions that we're going to be asking and the tools that we have are really just a recommendation. It's a guide. It's not intended to be a, a hard and fast rule in every situation. However, if you're not sure where to go, let this roadmap be a guide for you to hopefully navigate you through the project successfully. So let's begin with the define phase. At the define phase, we start off with this top level question, the same question we just asked. Do you fully understand the severity and scope of the problem? 
Again, if you cannot answer yes to that question, now we're going to dig deeper into a second layer or a second level of questions that will help us to answer that question. So, if we cannot answer yes to this question, then we're going to go to this next question. And these are the questions, there's four of them all together in the define phase that will help us to answer that top level question. So, again, if we can't answer yes to that one, then we'll go to this question. Can you clearly define the problem and its potential impact to the organization? Well, if you cannot, then you probably want to use these tools or resources lift, listed off to the side here on the right as a guide to help you in answering that question. Once you can answer yes to that question, you move on to the next one. Do you have a team that agrees with the project focus? Well, if you don't, or you're not sure if you do, then you might want to use these tools off to the right to help you in answering that question. And then if you can answer yes to that question, you move on to the next one. Do you understand the high level process related to the problem? There again is where we might use a process map or a SIPOC tool or some of those tools that give us a good understanding of the high level process that we're trying to understand for our project. And then finally, once we can answer yes to those all, all those questions before it, then the last question within the defined phase we want to ask ourselves is, do you have a method for communicating the project information? This is where you're starting to build the project charter or storyboard, starting to gather the information so you can communicate what you've gathered so far and continue to communicate throughout the duration of the project. So these are again the tools that you might use in helping to answer that. The idea behind this is that once you can answer yes to all these questions, chances are then you have answered yes or you could answer yes to this top level question for the define phase. So again, we're starting off with a top level question for each of these phases and if we cannot answer yes to that, then we're going to dig into the sub layer of questions, this level two layer of questions to help us in answering that top level one question. And also we've identified on here the outputs that you normally might expect from a defined phase. So coming out of the defined phase, you might expect to see a project storyboard, a charter, CTQ drill down, an army, or SIPOC, or some of these different tools like this as a guide so you can see what tools should be coming out typically of a defined phase. So again, once we can answer this question that we fully now understand the severity and scope of the problem, well, we move on to the measure phase. So at the measure phase, it works the exact same way. We have that top level question. Do you know the potential root causes, which are the same thing as the inputs or X's, as we would see in the transfer function, how we identify these root causes? And have, do we have enough reliable data to test those root causes? Well, again, if you're not sure, or, or you know you don't have the answer uh, to that question, then you want to use the second layer of questions to help answer that top level question. So if you can't answer yes, move down to this one. Do you know what metric reflects the output described by the problem statement? If not, then you might want to use something to help you define the project why. Then once you have that, you can answer this next question. Do you know how to define defects in the process or, and or the outputs? Well, if you're not sure, then use these tools to help you. Once you can answer it, go to the next one. Do you have enough data measuring the Y and the potential inputs or this X's? If you're not sure, then these are the tools that can help you in answering that question. And finally, within the measure phase, uh, once we've answered the other ones, now we can ask ourselves, do you know if, you if your collected data is accurate, repeatable, and reproducible? And this is a critical component of the measure phase where we do the measurement system analysis, or MSA, in order to help us make sure we have confidence in the data that we've collected so we can trust the data when we're going to do analysis in the next phase. And again, there are different types of outputs we might normally expect from the measure phase after walking through all these questions and using all these tools to help guide us. These are the typical outputs that we might see within the measure phase. Once we can answer all these sub-layer questions, that again, that's probably going to help us in answering the top level question for the measure phase about identifying the potential root causes and having enough data to test them. So once we can answer yes to that, then we're going to move on to the analyze phase. At the analyze phase, this is where we're going to ask that top level question, can you statistically validate what are the root causes or those inputs or X's? Again, if we cannot answer yes to that one, then we go into the sub layer questions within that, within the analyze phase. Do you know what the process capability is? And then you would ask yourself, do you know what the target sigma level or performance objectives are for the project? And then finally, you'd ask yourself, have you done hypothesis testing to identify which potential X's are statistically significant? Again, use these questions to guide you through the different steps that you would want to find out in answering this big question for the analyze phase about statistically validating what are the root causes. And you can use these tools and resources off to the right as a guide to help you in answering all these questions. So once we move on and can answer yes for the analyze phase, we move on to the improve phase where we ask ourselves, do you know what improvements will fix the root causes and by how much? Well, if you're not sure, then again, we're going to ask ourselves this next question. Do you know what potential X's are 
independent and statistically significant. And then we ask ourselves, do you know what improvements can be made to fix the root causes or the inputs or X's? And then finally we ask ourselves, did you pilot the improvements and get successful results? And in the same format as before, these are the tools off to the right that can help you in answer these questions. Once you can answer yes to these, you probably then can answer yes to this top layer question for the improve phase. Again, once you can answer that, you're probably ready to move on to the control phase. And then finally, at the end of your project, when you're at the control phase, you want to answer this top level question. Did the improvement successfully and permanently resolve the original problem? And if you're not really sure at this point, again, you move on to the second layer of questions. Did you implement the improvements? Are the improvements successfully meeting the expected results? Are they sustained and in control? Did you fully transfer control and responsibility of the improvements to the process owner? And does the team, including the sponsor and champion at their level, do they agree with the, that the project is complete? Once you can answer yes to all these questions, then chances are you have been able to answer this top layer question for the control phase about the improvements being successfully and permanently being implemented and that they're resolving the original problem. Again, once you can answer yes to all these questions, then chances are your project is complete and you're ready to move on. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, I'd like you to at least identify a couple of projects that you've led or maybe projects that you've worked on in the past. And then for each of those projects, I want you to try to ask yourself a few of these questions in relationship to the DMAIC roadmap. That is, look over the DMAIC roadmap at the first and second levels that we just reviewed in this particular module. And then ask yourself, as you're going through all those questions, compare those questions to what was actually done in those example projects that you're reviewing. Now for those, what questions or related tools or resources were not addressed in your project? Was there anything in there that you did not address in, in your actual project that you ran or helped support? And if they weren't addressed at all, then why was why were those tools or resources not used? Why were those issues not identified or addressed within your project? And then what different outcome or results could have been realized if you had addressed those issues or addressed those types of questions and used those tools in your project after all? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.